Uh, hi, my name is Gil Wright. I'm a member of Local 16 um, State Chance. Uh, we're sort of uh, spending some time here doing a little instructional videos. We've got the pandemic going on right now, so everybody's shut down. Uh, being safe, uh, sort of go back and forth from day to day, from being incredibly pessimistic to very optimistic, worried about it. My brother's out there, the craft, everybody's health. And uh, I guess sort of what how the world's going to look like. Six months, a year, two years, and that's going to change now. So, that said, I've been asked to um, talk about trust a little bit today. So, I guess a sort of brief background, although I wasn't really there for all of it, a little disclaimer is uh, before the rock and roll shows in the 60s and 70s started coming out of Strong, there wasn't sort of the need for this stuff. So, everything was semi permanent or permanent installs in theaters, and you'd have maybe a little clamshell in the theaters. Um, but as the show started to develop, um, the gear was getting, there'd be more gear and heavier gear. And they came up with movers and speakers and all this stuff. But they somehow needed to get uh, into a venue in short order, so you didn't have like a two or three day load in, uh, and then get it out in short order, and then send it to the next town and repeat over and over again. So, uh, sort of over the course of time, um, I'm not sure exactly the history of it, but just uh, aluminum truss was developed, which is just used for the entertainment industry. So this truss comes in a couple different configurations. Um, the most common one you'll see is box truss. So it's either a square or a rectangle on the end profile. Um, it's sort of made up of two of the other kind of truss, which is ladder truss, which would be just half of this truss without this, this threaders in the middle. Uh, you see triangles, you see a lot of sort of pre-rigged lighting stuff that comes around. It's typically a U-shape. Um, but the most common that you're gonna see is the 12 inch and the 20 and a half box. Diameters, different weights, all this stuff. That's the uh, and then it's all also made out of aluminum. So uh, aluminum's there because of its sort of strength to weight ratio. It's easier for people to install. Um, you know, transport costs are probably cheaper. You can fill a whole truck full of aluminum truss. You probably couldn't do it on a steel truss. Um, so the different components of the truss itself, um, the major part which uh, all the load goes through is the cord. Um, so there are loads going both left and right, and then you'll also get a little bit of stress in the flex as that happens. Um, it's two inch uh, two. I believe this was made because that's what theatrical batons were at the time. So a lot of the fixtures, especially in the beginning, uh, would just hang like two inches because they already had hangers, you know, little like the actual clamps or whatever that were made for this. Um, the second uh, element are the diagonals. So these are the smaller, these are typically one inch diameter, also the same thickness of the wall though. And these basically, um, they help to transfer vertical loads horizontally so they can go vertical for you. So if you were to hang something down from this point, you're gonna get tension in here, and that'll transfer to here, and then you can get the tension back over here. It's basically to move vertical force on the side. Um, they are smaller though, because there's not as much force in the diets as there is in the cord. Um, and then also because of that, you don't want to ever hang anything on this. You could most likely bend this with a ratchet strap. You're not going to do that to this. This is designed to take weight. This is not. Uh, and then the next members are sort of the uh, horizontal um, members. So these can be either two inch or one inch. Um, the two inch ones are okay to hang stuff from. That's probably why they make them two inch. Uh, the one inch ones, I wouldn't. So on the bottom here, if you add a light to go center, it might help with a little truss. That's fine. There's other members which aren't typically loaded. There's uh, like the vertical um, members, and uh, sometimes there's internal diagonals. Um, these can take some load in some cases, usually not unless the, the point is being hung from right next to it. Uh, diagonal ones, I'm told, are just for assembly. They don't, and if you think about the geometry, we'll get to it. Um, I guess the next thing is uh, connections. So there's two typical ways that these will connect. So when you'll get to a show, you'll have a pile of trucks. These are sort of modular. They come in um, lengths of different things. You have four foot, five foot, 12 foot, eight foot, 10 foot, 15 foot. So you sort of lay out your grid or the lines of trust. Um, when you orient them, you want to have them all uh, with the diagonals typically on the side 90% of the time. Basically, the diagonals have to be in the same plane as the direction of the force. So if the force is pulling down, you want the plane of the diags to be the vertical plane as well. Every once in a while, you'll get weird things, some ground-supported structures and stuff where the force is 
is actually going to be horizontal, and then the diagonals will be on top and bottom. So you'll you'll get two um, two pieces of truss together, and you have to connect them to make a single longer run of truss. Um, the most common one that we see are uh, five eighths grade eight bolts, um, and basically you just end to end these, and then push the bolt through and make the nut. Uh, you tighten them down to, I'm not sure if I ever saw this documented, but it's only like 60 or 80 pounds of force. These bolts are rated for, I think, 220 foot pounds, uh, which is totally unnecessary. If you do the math with the mechanical advantage of the wrench and the travel of the threads, you're going to get into like 20,000 pounds pretty quickly, which is totally unnecessary. The truss will fall apart. Um, so just snug enough that you know they're not going to come loose uh, during operation. As far as the orientation of the bolts, um, it's sort of a thing for the, or some of it is, I guess, for the out. It's good to have all the bolts pointing the same direction so that when somebody is disassembling them, um, they can keep the wrench in the same room, basically. They're always moving the same wrench. Uh, exceptions to that are as if you have a, there's a one by one foot cube called a corner block, which is used to turn 90 degrees or turn a vertical. It has uh, the gusset plates, uh, the bolting plates on both, on all four or all six sides. Um, in that instance, uh, it's common practice to put, orient the bolt so that the bolt points out, so the nut's on the outside. And the reason for that is it's just easy for doing a wrench rather than trying to reach in. And then the exception to that rule is if the truss is running vertically, uh, you want to have the nut on the bottom. So the, the theory behind that is if the bolt, uh, if the nut were to come loose, the bolt would still be giving you some support. Um, the second common way that we see these things connected um, is with cruise pins and outputs. Buses. So the truss will be, this is usually permanently installed. There'll be a, a female and a fork and a tine, I guess. And these go together. And then there's a clevis pin, which can be tapped in and tapped in and then secured safely with an arm clip. Um, just to put that so you can't see it. But the arm clips usually go on the inside. It's not a structural issue, it's just some things don't get caught on that. And again, that's. Uh, can vary from installation to installation, and if things are going vertically, you want the pin to be aided by gravity as well. Um, so you get to uh, your location, and you're ready to lay this stuff in uh, assembly. The truss will all get laid out on the, uh, on the deck, and as you're doing that, as you're laying the truss out, it's a good opportunity to inspect the truss. So you're just sort of doing visual inspections. It is required that the truss gets inspected, but um, you're not the person that wants to take responsibility for it. So if you see any dents, or bends, or abrasions, or cracks in the welds, those are the sorts of places it's going to fail. Probably just take the truss out of service. Uh, some of those are permitted to some degree or another, but that's, that's the owner of the truss's responsibility. The last thing that's sort of a follow-up on the inspection is that uh, the truss is made out of aluminum because it's easy to install, uh, it's easy to ship. Um, you know, two people, these trusses will weigh between 50, rarely more than 100 pounds a piece, so two people can carry them. Um, but it's more delicate than steel. So the downside to that is you have to be nice to the stuff. Like, don't drag it. Uh, it's going to make you look bad just because you're not respecting the owner in addition to other stuff. And then one final thing is uh, a little on the more advanced side, perhaps, but uh, a lot of times these will have stickers on them that give the load charts. And so those charts will tell you for a, a they, they don't tell you everything. They give you a set of things that you can sort of figure out. So they will tell you 10 foot spans, 20 foot spans, 30, 40, maybe 50, um, and how many loads in different locations can be hung on the truss safely. Often they'll also give you a deflection number that says how many inches over a 20 foot span the truss can bend. Um, and then <laughs> along the, <laughs> I need to remember to do stuff. The other thing I didn't mention was uh, nodes. So the strongest point of the truss is where the diagonals meet the cords. So this, if possible, is where you want to, uh, where you want to hang your loads from. Uh, I mentioned that the, the, the force goes across the truss through the diags. So at this point, you have the diags working for you. Here, you're just working on this, not, not including this vertical member. You're just working on that cord. So more often, it's important with the forces that go up because they're holding the majority of the force. Um, but if possible, the smaller. If it's a park hand or whatever, it doesn't make any difference. But if you're hanging a, you know, a speaker rack or something, a speaker array off of it, try to go for the notes. <laughs> yes. uh, I miss you guys. Like, I really enjoy being a stagehand. I don't know if it's going to be the same. I hope so. Take care of yourselves.